when I looked into it further, it turns out that this month the government of Japan is, is responding to this crisis of the summer and saying, well, we're going to take action. They, one of the actions they seem to be taking is this complicated looking spent fuel replacement well, this is, a, this is a major crisis. We finally got an article in the New York Times about it. It's been blacked out in the American major media. Thank God for your show and for the Internet. Um, uh, there is a spent fuel pool 100 feet in the air, brilliant design. Uh, John King at CNN called it a bathtub on the roof. It uh, has no containment over it. And uh, when the earthquake tsunami hit, Unit 4 had the fuel out. They were doing an inspection. It was in this pool, and a lot of it's very, very radioactive. And the... The stuff has been suspended 100 feet in the air since the accident. Two years. It, and and it, it actually caught fire at one point. They had to pour in seawater, which is corrosive. There's debris in the pool. We don't know the status of the fuel rods, and it has to come out of there because if, God forbid, another earthquake, well, we know another earthquake will hit mm. at some point. If one is strong enough to knock these fuel rods to the ground, they are clad in zirconium alloy, which will catch fire if it's exposed to air spontaneously. Zirconium is the stuff that was in flash cubes that you know, burn very brightly, very quickly. If there's a fire of this stuff, there has been shown to be uh, as enough cesium, radioactive cesium in these rods to exceed the releases at Hiroshima by a factor of 14,000. Mm. We're talking about huge radiation releases. So these rods have to be brought to the ground. It's never been done under these kind of circumstances. Mm.